Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Thomas Kudriki, who is the CTO of eCurrency. Thomas, welcome to the studio. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, I'd like to start off by talking a little bit about, uh, of course, uh, digital currency. Uh, we uh, are here because you've been participating in a uh, focus group on digital fiat currency. Uh, I wanted to ask you, perhaps you could share your experience of uh, uh, your uh, organization in the area of digital currency or central bank uh, digital currency uh, and, um, and tell us a little bit about uh, you know, what's, uh, what's on the horizon as well. Absolutely. Delighted to. Um, eCurrency is a is a company uh, created specifically for the sole purpose of producing tools for central banks to print, issue, distribute, and transact in digital fiat currency equivalent to cash. So the way we look at it is that tokens that represent actual banknotes. We have spent uh, quite a few years. Uh, we were funded about uh, seven years ago and we spent quite a few years talking to central banks, gathering requirements initially. Unlike perhaps uh, many other players in this area, we started uh, with a very uh, traditional product development process, right, by which we gathered requirements from the central banks, we spent some time prototyping and building our solution, and now we are in the process of, of commercially deploying it, and very happy to participate in the ITU efforts to standardize some of that. Now, should central banks uh, consider issuing digital currency, and if so, for what purpose? Well, today, um, everything is being digitized, right? Of course, from music, movies, anything that can be digitized is being digitized. Money is one of those uh, objects or concepts that is being digitized. Uh, however, the way it is done, uh, for the most part, is private money is emerging. It's the e-money, it's the mobile money operators that actually control the digital forms of money today. Um, many central banks find that disturbing because they are the authority to create, print, and distribute uh, cash. So why they should do it? Mostly because everything is being digitized, of course. Secondary issues are a uh, lack of control over what's happening, right? The private money is not interoperable. Uh, typically money operates, private money operates in silos that would need to be connected. Connecting those silos is um, uh, somewhat risky uh, because the ecosystem now grows and, and becomes even more out of control by the, by the authority that should, that should be exerting this control, namely, namely the central bank. So why they should do it? To us, it is relatively obvious. They need to be continuing to be the authority that actually prints, distributes cash. Um, why th they should do it now? I think the time is really ripe. Uh, we, as I mentioned, have spent s some time gathering requirements, talking with central banks, and um, uh, between the efforts of entities like IMF, International Monetary Fund, and Bank for International Settlements, BIS, and of course standardization bodies like ITU, um, a, a consensus emerges uh, as to how this can be done, and therefore now is the time to actually experiment with it. And what are the main challenges facing central banks in issuing digital currencies? It's sort of almost the flip side of, 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 the, of the reasons why they should do it. Um, so firstly, um, the, uh, a lot of noise, right? A lot of noise surrounding the subject of late. And discussions typically conflate a lot of different subjects. And central banks are looking at this and saying, you know, it's a brand new field. I don't really fully understand the consequences of it. I don't fully understand how to do this. Let me, let me wait. And the challenge, of course, in waiting is that the, the, the existing e-money ecosystem spins uh, further and further out of control. Um, a, a, a another challenge is uh, lack of standards, and, and, and perhaps we can chat about that in a moment. But um, standardization and ability to, to say, OK, we are doing it according to a accepted norms. Is a, is a very comforting thing, of course, for anybody, and certainly for relatively uh, conservative uh, organizations like central banks, uh, conservative by design and for very good reasons. So let's, you, you, you touched upon it there, but in terms of uh, 
the areas of digital currency, the standards are required uh, for uh, central banks? And, and how do you think the output of the focus group or uh, ITU could help to bridge the standardization gap? Yes, um, very good question. So at eCurrency, we, we are developing, of course, the set of tools to enable central banks to do it, as I mentioned. And we are relatively trailblazing. Uh, it's, it's a very new field. And standards allow comfort, first of all. Uh, of course, uh, they, they, they allow uh, a, a competition uh, to enter the field and, and compete on equal footing, uh, which we would certainly very much welcome. Um, and the areas are numerous, right? I think being a very uh, novel field, even the nomenclature is uh, very confused, right? Um, as a result, uh, one of the three tracks of our working group uh, focused on terminology. What what it is we are actually talking about, right? It is not cryptocurrency. It is not uh, various forms of digital assets, although in essence, digital fiat currency is a digital asset, but it's a very special asset, right? That is created, issued by the central banks. Uh, secondly, architectural considerations. Once you understand that what it is you're talking about, uh, what it is that you can do about it, how should that be built if you choose to do it, the architecture surrounding that is another uh, actually uh, working group area. We are just starting, right? Uh, I think ITU has played a wonderful role uh, hosting all this for us and, and being a great forum. Um, the working group, um, I think, is winding down over the next month or so. I think there's so much work, we, we sort of blazed the trail, if you would, but uh, there's a lot more work to be, to be done. Um, APIs, if we go down to the lower level of technology, standardization of that is another good, good thing that, that can come out of this effort. Well, Thomas Ricky, we wish you the very best of luck with the future, and thank you for joining us in the studio today, and we hopefully will we'll catch up with you again for more insights into thank this you so uh, fascinating subject. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank great. You. Great to be here. Thank you.